more importantly, providing five tips to boost your confidence and take your game to another level for season 2022. So make sure to stick around. I'll be providing of those five tips. We're discussing how to improve your confidence in terms of skill, how to improve your confidence in terms of strength, gaining muscle mass, your um, the importance of training at a higher level, and then the last one, making sure that you're watching your own vision. If you haven't got any of your own vision, make sure to start filming your games so you've got those reference points. Before we get into those, just a quick uh, demo in terms of who's coming onto the podcast this week. So we have James Jock from The Footy Coach. That podcast will be launched on Wednesday for our weekly episode. Thursday, we have two live chats. We have an interview with James Ford, who's the high performance manager of the Essendon Football Club, where we're talking about AFLW pathways and how the impact of the growth from the Australian Rules Football League and the, with the Women's League has impacted the development pathways. So for all the female footballers out there or parents of uh, female footballers, make sure to tune in to our chat with James at one o'clock on Thursday. Then also my weekly update this week will be on performance recovery. So we've got a recent question on our Instagram from uh, Stephen, he asked about, uh, and he's actually plays American football. He was asking around how to best recover um, after training sessions, particularly main training sessions, leading into your, your next training day. Um, but also how to apply that to when he's in season. So I'm going to provide a framework, uh, some similar systems that we use at Melbourne Footy Club, as well as things that I learned while I was at Hawthorne Football Club. Uh, so you can benefit from from those there pretty easy to apply to your football uh, routine. So if you're interested in upping your recovery game and improving your performance through preparation, uh, make sure to tune in with me this Thursday on YouTube at 2 p.m. If you're not subscribed, subscribed yet to our YouTube channel, make sure you do it. Um, subscribe now by clicking the button below. We post weekly uh, videos on exercise tutorial videos, uh, podcasts, short podcast clips, so highlights from our podcast interviews and much, much more. So remember to like and subscribe our YouTube channel. Then we also have another interview this Thursday with Carmen Colomar on 4 o'clock. She's a high-performance coach that's worked across numerous um, high-performance uh, elite pathways and we'll be discussing specifically how training load impacts her decision making when she's prescribing re recovery modality so for all the sports scientists out there athletes that want to improve your, your recovery process and also high performance managers this will be the chat you will not want to miss so that's 4 p.m australian eastern time uh, australian eastern time this thursday and then our bite-sized episodes one of our most popular episodes over the last year with robert Orgy, who's a professor at victorian university he was also involved in a elite group of practitioners that worked with the recent FIBA World Cup and looking at uh, motion, time motion analysis as well as notational analysis. So we have a chat around the technology uh, and the most up-to-date technology in terms of how to analyze athletes' movement and specifically to the game of soccer. So there's big, big money uh, invested in this space, especially for the World Cup. So make sure to tune in. That will be a bite size episode on Friday. If you like the bite size, check out the full interview. Let's get into the five tips to boost your confidence for this upcoming season. So I'm going to get back into YouTube, uh, back into Instagram as well. So our five tips uh, to boost your confidence to help with your on-field performance. Number one, football is a skill and tactical sport. So you need to make sure you can consistently got a routine with your skill. Obviously, I'm stepping outside of my lane here. I'm a strength conditioning coach. I'm not a skills tactical coach. Uh, so I'll defer to businesses like Josh Groydon, uh, the kicking consultant, Ben Stanley, Enhanced Football, Tim Schmidt, um, as well as Ball Magnets. There's some great resources that you can check out to up your game. But if you want to boost your confidence for your upcoming season, get your hands on the footy regularly and follow those resources in terms of uh, keeping your training interesting and engaging and work on things like your goal kicking your feel kicking, your hands in terms of in close and reactive work uh, and have a theme to your session. Make it make sure it's deliberate practice. But that would be number one. If you want to boost your confidence, practice and have a daily routine. Number two, I think it goes a long way, particularly for our younger uh, developing athletes, improve your ability to produce maximal force. 
i.e. strength. So things like how much you can um, press your body weight, how how many chin-ups you can do, so your pulling strength. These things will help you in, in the in the contested side of the game. Um, your leg strength to be able to hold your feet and keep your feet uh, and, and not lose your, your legs when you're on the ground, particularly in our single leg positions like kicking, jumping and accelerating. Um, so and your agility so make sure you've got good leg strength particularly single leg leg strength um, so imp- make sure that you're if you're if you're at the stage where you're lifting weights progressively overload those weights over a period of time and if you're still working on more your your lower level lower level movements like body weight movements try and uh, increase the, the range of motion so you're challenging progressively overloading yourself that way or increase your repetition so you're challenging it um your muscles that way so continually progress your strength in the gym that's really important and also learn how to apply that on the field there's definitely a big difference between gym strength and on-field strength and some athletes have both and they will um, definitely go a long way in boosting their confidence and some athletes may be really strong in the gym but they haven't learned how to apply that in the in the contest in a jostling wrestling situation on the field to win the football so if you've got your strength in a good spot in the gym keep working on that uh, but spend some time and energy with either a wrestling coach, a combat coach, or a football coach to uh, be able to apply that force and, and strength on the ground to dominate your opponent. So that would be second tip for boosting your confidence. Uh, for those tuning in, we've got Instagram going again this week. So if you've got any questions around this topic, feel free to hit the comment button below and I'll answer your questions. Number three, gaining your critical mass, i.e. muscle mass. So by having more lean muscle mass, it'll also assist your strength on the field. Um, so that will go a long way. But also um, it goes a long way in terms of just your overall self-esteem. So if you're low in confidence, um, another tip that can help your confidence is just in, gen- in terms of general life confidence is boosting muscle mass. I found a lot of athletes have had a better performance on, on the field just simply because their self-esteem and how they feel about themselves has improved for the work that they did in the gym and how they look in the mirror. So number three, in my experience, has been packing on the muscle mass. So you can do that through particularly muscles around your trunk and your midline um, to make it more specific to football. So uh, and easy things that you can do to, to do that is add 10 to 15 minutes of core work, not just static core work, but rotational power core work. So things like wood chops with a band, um, med ball throws, so you're rotating through your hips. Um, use, uh, check out our YouTube channel for our power exercises with landmine or torsonator exercises are another good one for rotational power. Um, uh, for guys that need to gain and girls that need to gain some muscle mass around their arms to have a bit more body armor for their shoulders, I'll add 10 sets of arms and shoulders. So I think you could do three sets of biceps, three sets of triceps, and four sets of shoulders, and it's the athlete's choice. So they can do that twice a week. There's an extra 200 reps, 10 sets of 10, um, that they can do to, to add, gain some critical math and, and boost your confidence. Number four, train with an older group or a, a level of footballers that are above you. So let's say your brother plays in the under-17s and you're in the under-15s. See if you can join him with the under-17s for a couple of sessions or for a, week, for a few weeks over a monthly block. Of course, that's going to challenge your confidence. But when you go back to training with your mates, you've been training at a higher standard. So now when you go back to your mates, you're going to feel a lot more or your your normal age group or perhaps you're training with a NAB league team and you're going back down to your community level. You're going to feel far more confident going back down to that level because you've trained at a higher standard. Okay, so tip number four would be train with an older group or train with a higher standard or maybe you're in the off season and you're catching up with mates. Don't just catch up with the same mates. Try and challenge yourself and train with the best football that you know during the off-season to improve your game. So that would be tip number four. And, and you know, embrace making mistakes uh, in that situation because they're going to happen. You're going to get caught out, but you're going to learn, you're going to grow, and you're going to be better for it for the long term. And then to round out our five, my five tips to improve your confidence for season 2022 will be watch the vision of your best performance. So start getting your parents to film your games um, this is critical, something that's done in the AFL and has been done for a long period of time is video analysis so you can see exactly what you're doing, what you're doing well, um, what you could be doing better. Sit down with a coach, review your game. It doesn't even need to be a coach, just someone uh, maybe at your football club that uh, has experience in, in video analysis or hire a coach to, to review your game 
and get some feedback. But also when you're low in confidence, maybe you're watching this in season, you didn't have a great performance on the weekend and you need to turn that around for the next week. Watch in terms of visualisation tasks, watch your best performance, watch what you did well and it's a good reminder to know that you're not that far off it from performing your best. And just by watching that, visualising that, um, you know, what we what we spend time on, we can attract. So you want to make sure you focus on what you're good at and that will um, pay dividends for your future games rather than just getting yourself in a rut. And as you know, when your confidence is high, usually our performance is high. There's a good strong correlation with that. So have a record, be able to um, have someone you know, film your games, watch, watch particularly those uh, highlights, reels, the way you're playing your best um, position and you're playing your best role for the team. And then that's a good thing to get into the habit of watching throughout the season when things maybe aren't going quite well for you. You can turn it around. So that's the five tips. Uh, and make sure to check out those resources as well for those looking to improve their kicking skills. Power tip for this week and calling out all strength and conditioning coaches. I'd love to know your favourite coaching cue that more often than not works for you when you're working with athletes. So for me, uh, a lot of the times I'll see athletes, they'll be really strong through the legs uh, and they'll be generating good amount of force into the ground for something like a squat or a deadlift, but they've got poor ability to be able to um, create tension through their midline and and, that, and their spine ends up copping the load and they're either rounding their spine or they're overextending their spine. So a bracing cue that I absolutely love is make sure that you're punching, you're, mad, you're bracing as if someone was going to punch you in the guts as hard as you can. You're not bracing as if there's someone that's attractive that's walking past you that you're trying to impress and you're sucking in your gut. Okay, so we want to make sure we're expanding, you're building your own belt, you're pushing out before that deadlift. Once you've set that core, then you're driving through the ground. Um, so I find that is a really effective cue. It seems to resonate both with younger athletes, senior athletes, men, women, whoever it might be. Uh, it's in a good analogy, good visual uh, that seems to to uh, work quite effectively. But I'd love to know. So Instagram messages, direct messages, or email, email me at jacketpropellercapro.com. What's a coaching cue that, you, that has worked for you time and time again? Hit it up. This is a new segment that we're going to do. It's part of our power tip, but also I'm really keen to get some feedback and some knowledge from you guys and i'll share it uh all the messages that we get i'll share it on, on our socials for everyone to benefit and then another x section that we're going to do is promoting uh, other podcasts or other educational platforms that i think are doing a really good job in the industry so this week it's going to be the sports map uh, podcast nick kane i absolutely love the interview with brady green uh, great job guys uh, i'm currently working with someone on uh, uh, and an AFL level with a calf strain, and it was great to um, have some practical takeaways. Sometimes it's good just to hear from other practitioners. I think the program we've got in place for this athlete uh, is uh, really sound, and, and it resonated uh, what you guys were saying, but I think it's always good to hear it from, from uh, someone else. So if you're a strength and conditioning coach or if you're working in rehab or you're just interested in calf strain injuries, make sure to listen to, I think it's their most recent episode on the Sports Map podcast with Brady Green. He's got an extensive background as a physiotherapist working at the Eston Football Club and he's now doing great things in research. So it's research backed his processes as well, which always helps. That's it for this week. Uh, well, it's been a massive week. So I've, I've done this interview a couple of days late because I'm, on, I'm down the coast in Geelong uh, for my master's intensive, uh, which I'm, I just pretty much completed my master's of applied sports science at Deakin University. So um, that's a plug for them. They're actually number one. It's the number one course for high performance sports, sports science uh, in the world. So if you're interested in doing your masters, highly recommend it. I'm at the end of the of the year and a half course. It's predominantly been online, which I've really enjoyed. Um, working in elite sport time is quite precious. So to be able to be flexible, um, I've really enjoyed the um, the fact that you've got that flexibility to, to fit in with your schedule. Uh, the lectures, the, tu the tutors are um, uh, really open to people coming in and out and the assignments that uh, are done ha are well ahead of time. You can chip away at them throughout the trimester. You don't need, you know, you know you're not just thrown um, assignments last minute uh, as well as the practicals are really, really beneficial. You're working with um, experienced practitioners that have, that have worked on both sides, both the applied sport side as well as the research side so if you are a strength and conditioning coach interested to to do your master's degree 
check out the Deakin University. Uh, it's been a great week this week. Thank you to everyone that was involved and awesome work as well from our group. We presented yesterday uh, on Basketball Australia so and we got everything done and um, it was a great group to work with. Joy, Graham and Carl, shout out to you guys. Thank you for everyone tuning in. I'll see you next week. Remember to tune in to James Ford's episode this Thursday. That's at 1 o'clock and then Carmen Coloma at 4 p.m.